Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy, founder of QuickMail.io. And this is Jack, Chief Lead Generation Officer at SalesBread.com. Today. Today, we're coming at you with a... Oh, I have mine. Do you? Nice. Okay. My green screen is making my uh, my beverage turn weird colors. But yeah, we so, got a water cooler yeah, chat. You bet it. It's a water cooler. That's right. That is what right. About? And it's sort of a teardown as well. Because we're going to be reviewing messages that a robot wrote that can be used in cold outreach, right? We're revisiting Go on. <laughs> AI personalization lines. All right. I'm curious. Are they, we got some examples. Are they right? ready? We have examples. We also have before and after. So you can see where they were at last year and today. Oh, nice. And hopefully that. it'll help you decide if um, <laughs> you should, if you're ready to let go of your actual you know team members that are taking care of personalization <laughs> and if the bots are ready to dominate or vice versa uh, i don't believe it but anyway let's uh let's uh discuss it that's right okay and so a water cooler sponsorship is appropriate at this point how does how does that sound like a water cooler was uh, hey jeremy sponsorship. have you ever <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you ever lack the time or expertise to uh-huh Turn cold prospects into warm, qualified sales leads. Uh huh. It's hard, right? <laughs> yeah. That's why at salesbread.com, we'll do it for you and in return, nice. send you one qualified lead every single day. Every and day. Also, brilliant. I don't mention this a lot, but um, a nice <laughs> little side um, product is you've got a working cold outreach process that you can eventually bring in house when you're ready. Nice. Um, Very nice. Yeah. Very so nice. if you want to shorten the learning curve and get one lead every single day, even if you're going after high ticket, hard to get C level execs on your calendar, go to salesbread.com, get in touch. Love it. And uh, I'm not sure if you heard about this, but there is that new, really, well, not that new, actually. It's a pretty good tool. It's been running not a, that new. Yeah. It's running away for, it's running, running for eight years now. And it's, um, it's got like a super big catch focus. It. Yeah. It's got, <laughs> It's got like, it's already far, right? It's really good for the deliverability also. I heard like all the features they're doing is really like- What's it called, great. Jeremy? I think it's quick mail, I think. Yeah, quick mail. Quick mail. You, I remember. You're pronouncing yeah. that right? Okay. Yeah, you should, you should try it out. It's it's really Who's good. Who's it I for? Heard. Who's it for? Um, mostly for lead generation agencies. Or actually, it's, it's for everyone who wants to do code outreach. But lead generation agencies really love it because I think there's a lot of tools specifically uh, helping them. A lot of features, sorry, specifically helping them to scale. And uh, and so when you're an agency with like 10 clients or more, it's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's so good. So good, man. So, it sounds so good for the yeah, power user. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that, Jeremy. <laughs> Take another beverage sip here. Okay. Yeah. Let's so see. let's uh, transition here. Keep the water cooler banter going. But I want to start by reading um, a one-year-old AI-generated first-line personalization sentence. Nice. Who, who is it for? Is it like for me or for anyone else? For my profile? It's okay. So this one was a year ago, and they're not tailored to you or me. Okay. Um, this one is for. It looks like the founder of another company. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to check it out. Um, I've also grabbed two different tools so that we can see what the two tools look like a year ago and where they're looking at today. Very cool. Let's see if it came along or if it's kind oh, of right. the same. Let's stop the timer. Right. Otherwise, it's going to take ages. Let's go for it. You're right. <laughs> All right. So here's what the computer wrote last year. Hi, David. Your company, blah, blah, blah is making an impact in areas that are necessary for economic growth and security. What you're doing is a real game changer, exclamation point. I also noticed that you've done a lot of consulting work, which has been really educational for you both professionally and personally. It's really great to hear how much you enjoy it, exclamation mark. It's a mouthful, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. What can I say? Okay, um, let's read one more so that we really understand where these AI personalization writers were a year ago. Okay. Okay. Next line. This is for another professional. It says, it's great to see you're in the strategy and execution business. 
<laughs> As these are two major skills I value highly. <laughs> you also mentioned your work has a focus on financial models and synthetic portfolios, which is something I'm very interested in. I look forward to talking more about your work with you. Wow, this one is trash. It's not only trash, but it backs up the user in a corner where it's like, uh, when you go to that call, if you do get it, you better be interested in synthetic <laughs> portfolios. <laughs> A little bit intense. Mm. All right. So... Yeah, that was Jack. I'm doing the meeting today. You know, it's like it's sort of. Oh yeah, he's interested into that. Uh, well, I'm mildly. Yeah. Yeah. So so basically, what did we decide a year ago? If you use it, it's at your own risk. At best, I think we were <laughs> recommending use it as like a starting point, and then you can edit yeah. from there. That's right. That's right. But that's okay. But like at you... that point, why? Do you remember was my? It one of, one of the thing I really didn't like with AI is like, it tells you what I already know and I don't care, right? It's like, hey, Jack, I know you're running, you know, you've been running sales bread for X number of years. You have X number of employees. Like, it's like all the stuff like, yeah, I know. It's like, it, it's not really connecting with me. And I think that was my, my biggest point, right? It's like, if you contact me and tell me what I already know, it's like, you have zero value to me. Well, let's take it back a step because that's not entirely true if you're talking about something like everyone knows if you gave a TED Talk, you know you gave a TED Talk. So mentioning it in that case, it would break your rule. You already know that. However, yeah. it's nice when we know other people have watched our talk. and No, no, what is nice it. is to know that they actually resonated with them or they enjoyed it or they pass it to someone or all those things. But telling you like, Hey Jack, mm. I'm reaching out to you because you did a tech talk mm. last year, and it's like it's like it, it doesn't actually unless it's a reach out is for the tech talk. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it makes no sense, right? It's like uh, Jack, you know, it falls contact, flat. Yeah, yeah, it falls flat. That's the thing, right? Okay. But anyway, I'm curious to see you. You know how it let's do it has evolved this year. Let's do it. Okay, so we've got a couple of sentences from a few different tools out there, and. I've asked the tools to personalize based on our LinkedIn profiles. That's the Ooh, input, nice. at least. Okay. Now, are you ready for mine? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is, I'm going to read you two so that we can really figure out where they, where they went after a year. Okay. Jack, I'm positive that you're an amazing mentor. Thanks for all the advice you've given me. Next, next tools attempt. Jack, Mark had some wonderful things to say about you on LinkedIn, mentioning your strong network and expertise. I bet that you must be really good at meeting new people and helping them be more successful. Yeah. Okay. Like, either, now, either your profile is trash or the AI can't figure out what your profile is about because that looks okay. really odd. Now, here's where it gets interesting because those first two are right in line with the last year's read, right? The only improvement was they were shorter, which was helpful. Yes. Now, I'm just... going to read you one more from my profile and suspend judgment until you hear it. Let's, okay, let's right. figure out okay. something. Okay. I zip it. All right. This is another tool. Hey, Jack, I came across your podcast and I'm intrigued to know more about how you help sales teams book more meetings with decision makers. Holy hell. You've That's got good. a great understanding of how to engage people and create connection with them. I'd love to hear more about your experience in closing sales. Pretty damn good. Why are they so long? Why are they so long? Yeah, Still, but it's pretty but... damn good the approach. Like, you know, that could that could be a human. Like, okay, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. So what does that make you think? A, I'm taking from this. They're they're kind of across the board, depending which tool you use. I'm not ready to make a recommendation. I don't think Jeremy is either. So we're going to intentionally leave the tools out of it. But the quality differs per profile. Even just hitting refresh, it gives you like, wow, I, I think the last read was the best. But like occasion, occasionally you'll get a good one, but I'm seeing most of them are still odd. Want to read yours? Yeah, please. I'm curious. Okay. All, right, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, this is Jeremy's two different tools. Okay. Jeremy, I saw you mention that you have a book published and also a podcast. I'm sure that your book and podcast have a high listenership and have been successful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's rubbish. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's try another one. 
Hey, Jeremy, I came across your experience as an author, co-host of a podcast and founder of a company. I'd love to hear more about how using your expertise to help grow your company. Right? Oh, rubbish. Okay. Team. Okay. Yeah. One more though. One more and let's talk about it. For some reason, this starts off furthermore, but okay. Furthermore, I'm really impressed with how Min is an easy to use and free CRM for small businesses. <laughs> and we get a laugh. <laughs> So, so again, uh, the the joke here is because uh, yesterday when we talked, you said like, hey, what's mean by the way, Jeremy? And so I explained it to you. And so the AI actually get it faster. But it's, it's pretty fun. T tell me again. Furthermore, I'm really impressed with how Min is an easy to use and free CRM for small businesses. And that's it. That's it. But that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. But um, yeah, so he's impressed. It's not like, hey, you've been doing mean, you know, for X number of years or whatever. Right. And it's reaching. It's like it's better. It's not a statement. It's a reaction to, you know, that's the, and then, so I think that's a, that's a big difference. What, what do you make of all those AI lines at the moment? Like, will you start now, um, you know, firing team members and, uh, <laughs> and replacing no. them with them? No, no, no. <laughs> so, okay. I think this is worth stating, but I will never. Sales bread will never not have someone who looks after personalization. It's too important to just hope AI does a better job. I think, um, I think, it's coming along. Maybe at today, I still don't think it's uh, the ROI is there. I, I know these tools are cheap, but I just think I'd rather start with a blank LinkedIn profile and a Google search and a business website and a trained. Uh, expert who's going to find the best thing to write as opposed to relying on this tool as a starting point, but check in in a year and that may actually change. What do you think? Good point. Um, the improvement is there, definitely. <clears throat> but here's the thing is, if I was doing it at scale, what is my real need for generating brand new um, intro lines for everyone like, and, and different style and stuff, right? Like, let's say, for example, you could say, hey, if you go to your profile and that person's mentioning a certain hobby, whatever, just here's a sort of rule you want to apply. You know, like rule base for personalization may work just as well. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't think you need like a tool to try to figure out what type of intro you want to do. Maybe for speed, right? But again, like you could still do it like programmatically. And you could say, you know, hey, by the way, like a PS could be whatever hobby they're mentioning or whatever. You, you see what I mean? Yeah, it's like, the, the, to some extent, there is probably a way to program and stuff. Like you don't need all these sort of like AI work with everything and produce everything type of thing, right? You could have like a very clear process to to say. No, oh, of course. And if you run an SOT agency, you better. Right, exactly. Right? You're right? better. But I think it's just going to discount what personalization... Well, personalization will have to evolve with this because once this becomes the default or it's once this becomes is. cheap enough where everyone's doing it, well, if somebody sends me a lot of those that we read today, I'm going to know it was someone who wasn't thinking very hard when they wrote it. It's just off, right? But I think personalization will have an evolution maybe six months out. Um, I think we should all pay attention to what's going on here because things are changing in a good way. Um, what that's going to do to reply rates is another discussion. I think the level will be increased. I'm thinking video, uh, may play a role in 2023. Yeah. I know you're very big on the videos. You've been not very on. big, not very big, but I'm optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, time is up. Um, maybe I'm thinking humans still have a chance to outperform very easily AIs at the moment, I think. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm curious to see what next year is going to be about either people would have sort of catch up on the thing, which I think they did by the way, already. Like now it becomes much harder, even with personalization, because people think like, oh, this is automated, even when it may not. And that's a, that becomes a problem now. 
Um, but we'll see, yeah, where it is in one year. I still think, uh, like you, I think it's a bit too early yet to just uh, rely fully on a on a tool. I think it's foolish. I think you're gonna burn yeah. a lot of leads uh, stupidly. But um, it could give you some sort of base. Like you could actually imagine nowadays. I think you could potentially imagine a two step, um, a two step intro, um, a two step personalization processing one that is actually just the AI just putting the stuff and then a human just looking at the AI and just rephrasing them the way it should be so that's a potential thing that I think it could potentially work now because the AI will pick up on some stuff and the human will make it like something like you know less less stupid and more human how how much is that really going to be better though if we only cared about quality and not price I feel like it'd be better to have the human start from scratch if you're still going to have a human work on it. Maybe, but you have to consider that, you know, you you spend a little bit of time to open the page then scroll to the page. And I think that's where the AI could actually be helpful in, in generating all that data, you know, s- s- putting it down to one thing. And then after that, you can just build up on just that one thing. But in Suppose a better way. The only, the only thing that would change this is if you actually didn't care about cost and you wanted to make sure you had the absolute best personalization period, that's it. If that's the case, then it'd be a very long time before you replace that any part of the process with AI. Agreed. Because why? Yeah, I think it's really just about cost saving for people interested in the AI route. AI route. Good question. I'm not sure really what's the most appealing thing or because it's like... They have to do something, and so therefore the AI provides a potential easy solution for doing it, rather than you know sending it without personalization. I'm not sure. Like I think personalization could even hurt in that cases. Um, oh yeah, if it's bad personalization, it'll absolutely hurt. Yeah, it'll backfire. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'm, I'm right there with you. But again, let's keep monitoring it. It's, it could get interesting. Oh well, well, Jack, thank you so much for. Uh, the revis- revisiting this uh, this thing. Um, if people are interested in knowing more, they could go to course.quickmail.io. Uh, this is where we're going through all the things to... Anyway, this is this is what I Go ahead, uh, Jack, you do it better than me. What, what the hell am I starting it anyway? <laughs> HTTPS slash colon course.quickmail.io. There you go. All right, because it's a water cooler. I won't mention that it's the number one course you could use to train anyone on your team without That's spending right. any of your time. Even if you're not the top 1% cold emailer, a teammate could become it. Or if you're trying to build up the best agency that does cold emailing, Sales Bread is giving you kind of the, the kimono here. Um, nice. Get yourself the tools, mindset, strategies, and tactics that might make you a ton and your clients a ton of money. Um, yeah, so I'm glad we didn't. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't mention it. So as it's next time, <laughs> you <Yeah>, next time. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. See you, Jeremy. Bye.